Hello, Miata internet people. My name is Keith Tanner here from Flying Miata, and today we're going to be talking about how to get more camber out of your NA and NB Miata, and maybe some others as well. Specifically, about extended lower ball joints and why that's the best way to go, or why we think it's the best way to go. So, I'm going to start off. Um, if you have any questions while we're shooting this live, we're live on Facebook today, please put them in the comments. I will do my best to answer those. If you're watching this in the future, uh, then uh, put them in the comments. We will do our best to answer those as well. Um, hopefully, you know, your participation is what makes these, these videos a little more engaging because it gives me something to talk about. So, camber. What is camber, or specifically the negative camber is what we're looking for, but what we're referring to is basically the angle of the wheel when the car's, when the car's at rest. If the bottom of it is further out than the top, if it's like this, that's negative camber. If it's like this, that's positive camber. Miatas are set up to run negative camber like almost every vehicle, um, but there's a question about how much you want. And the reason you want camber is because the, the angle of the wheel changes as, as it goes through its motion here, uh, called camber gain, but not on a full one-to-one -one as the car rolls. So you start off with a little more negative camber than you need so that when the car rolls in a corner, the tire sort of flattens out. Um, there's also a little bit of side force from camber, um, which is kind of handy when you're going around corners. And also some tires are specifically designed to work better with more camber, especially things like Hoosier Slicks like to run a lot of it. So the amount of camber you run um, depends on what you're running for tires, what your plans are for the thing, and it's got to be admitted there is a certain subset who does it for style. There is a, uh, there is a look of extreme camber, which it's not our normal focus, but this still applies. So, especially if you're at a stock ride height, there's a limit to how much negative camber you can get, and it may be more than you can actually, you may not be able to get as much as you want. So there's a number of ways to do that, and I'm going to talk about what those are and the best ways to go. So let's get this thing out of the way so I can point the suspension a little bit. Look at that nice, shiny, deep silver Kojeki in stock now. Brand new color. Mm. Okay. So, Travis, you might want to come around the side, show the back side here. All Miatas have a very similar front suspension, double wishbone. Um, the, uh, the knuckle here pivots on an upper ball joint and a lower ball joint, which is this big chunky thing down here. Uh, and of course, it's attached to the chassis in different places. So if you want to increase your negative camber, you either have to move this in or push this out. There's been a bunch of different ways this has been tried. Um, one way you can do it is you can make an adjustable upper control arm that, pull, that basically shortens. You can take out spacers. There's a bunch of different ways it can be done, but effectively moving this inboard. The problem with that is that you can get into clearance problems up here. There's some fairly important pieces of metal that tend to get in the way of your tires. Uh, so pulling in the top of the wheel can have other problems. You get into interference with your spring. You get into interference with the, uh, the inside of the wheel well. It's problematic. Um, you can also have trouble on some of the later cars and with different kinds of shocks that can be much larger. You can get into clearance problems on the hole in the upper control arm. So it's not a great way to go on a Miata. Some other platforms, it might work better. Miata's not so much. Another way to do it is to put adjustable offset bushings in here. In these, uh, well, you can put them in the upper or the lower, but I've only ever seen them for the lower. And that pushes the bottom of the control arm out a little bit by basically offsetting where the center of the bushing is. We've tested those. Uh, we actually used to offer them for a while. The problem is, is that they're usually a polyurethane bushing with a steel sleeve inside, which is how it usually works. But there's nothing keeping the sleeve from rotating. And that's what would happen, is you get into a hard corner, you get all the force pushing on the bottom of the wheel here, all the force going, cornering force going through this lower control arm, and then your bushings would slip, and you'd lose all your camber. So, problem. So that's why the extended lower ball joint comes in. And that basically takes this point, this piece, and I'll show you one in a moment on the, on the bench, and moves this pivot point further out a little bit. It gives you a slightly wider track, which is good. It does not affect your clearance up here Badly. There's a little bit of a change, but not as much as if you're pulling the top in. Um, it doesn't affect your, uh, your fender clearance too badly, and it basically gives you that extra camber without any real downsides. So let's go over to the bench and I'll show you what we've got going on here. So this is a factory Mazda pushing, or um, lower ball joint. 
great big beefy thing. I mean, it has to be because all of your cornering forces go through this. Uh, the upper control arm is mostly there to keep the wheel from falling over. This is where all of the forces get passed through, including when you're, you know, in the middle of a corner and you hit a curb. There's a lot of big shock loads go through this. So you do want to make sure you have a very good quality lower ball joint. Um, there are some cheap knockoffs, some sort of non-OE, non-OEM versions out there. It's a tempting place to save money, but it's not a good place to save money because you can imagine a failure of this part means that your wheel has just lost contact with this lower control arm and you will now crash. So we do strongly recommend that you use good parts from a known supplier. Rock Auto might be a known supplier, but let's say good parts from a, uh, from a top quality manufacturer, shall we say. That's why when we sell stock size ones, we sell actual Mazda ones because it's not a place to, uh, not a place to take, take chances. So we also have the Bauer Limited Production Extended Lower Ball Joint. Now you have to look pretty carefully, but it is, you can see I've got them lined up on this bolt, which is part of the control arm, and you can see that it's slightly further out, it's slightly longer. This is a forged part, it's probably stronger than the factory one, good quality ball joint, so you don't have to worry about failures on track on this. Um, they're actually legal for Spec Miata in the NASA series, we worked with NASA on that one. Uh, it's le legal for some of the SCCA, STR, and that sort of thing. Um, definitely check with your sanctioning bodies if they're legal, but racers are always looking for more camber, and so this is a very good way to do it. They're sold in pairs for actually less than you pay for Mazda parts, so it's a, it's a great deal. Um, so some of the questions we've had about this. Do we have any questions so far? Nope? Okay. Some of the questions we've had about this is what else do you need to modify when you do it? Do you need to change your upper control arms? And the answer is no. Um, they're designed to work with upper control arms, or factory upper control arms. Um, you do have to watch out because, especially in the later models, the NB2s, uh, those upper control arms gained more and more gaskets, or uh, grommets, whatever you want to call them. Flanges, whatever, it had a lip. <laughs> it's hot here, my brain's not working. Um, basically the hole in the control arm is smaller on those, and so you've got a better chance of a big shock rubbing on this, and this will increase that possibility. So that is a potential downside. If you're close already, um, you might have to do a little bit of clearancing. On, the, uh, on that extra gusset that's on, the, um, that's on the upper control arm, but it's definitely worth the, worth the trade-off. Um, the maximum camber gain that comes out of these, and you think it wouldn't be much because, I mean, look at how close they are. The maximum camber gain, you will gain about three degrees of negative camber by bolting these on. So if your current range of adjustment is, say, minus two to one degree positive, that will shift to minus five to two degrees negative. It's a three degree offset. So that's a big jump. Um, obviously you'll want to probably pull in, the, uh, pull in the adjustable camber a little bit, but um, yeah, it certainly good, gets you within a good range, especially if you're running a higher ride height and your camber limited already, or if you're running a tire that requires a lot of very aggressive camber, good way to get it. Now a good question that came up was, will these cause more severe bump steer? The Mazda's are pretty good for bump steer as it is, but will it affect the bump steer? And it's one I didn't have a lot of time to look into, but I don't think it will. And the reason is, see if we can get back over here, Travis. Ugh. You don't want to look on this side. Bump steer comes basically from the relationship between the length of the here and the pivot points um, on the steering rack and the pivot points on the steering arm and the control arms. What you're doing is you're moving this out a little bit, uh, which also moves the steering knuckle outboard as well, so as, in, as a result you have to extend the tie rod to keep your toe. Since it's all moving in the same direction by the same amount, I don't think bump steer is going to be affected. Great question though. I'm glad to, I was glad to see that one. Are they good for a street car? If you need lots of camber, they are good for a street car. There's nothing that would stop you from running these on a street car unless you're running extraordinary amounts of camber. Camber doesn't cause rapid tire wear but it will eventually wear out the inside edge of the tires more than the outside if you're driving in a straight line all the time. I've burned up sets of tires you know, on the interstate, run through an entire life cycle of tires running a couple of degrees of camber, and they show very little uneven wear as long as you're driving things that aren't interstates once in a while. Um, but if you are going for extreme stance style fitment and you're basically running only on the inside edge, yeah, you are gonna see rapid wear, but we don't usually go that far. So one of the other questions is, are there camber adders for other platforms like the ND? And the, question, the answer to that one is, yes, there are. And I'm going to show you something that we offer for the ND. We'll be going into depth, a little more in depth than these later. But these are another clever part that we get from, uh, from Bauer. I don't think they're available anywhere else. 
but they are basically replacements for the steel inserts that are in the upper control in the um, spindles on the ND. And what they basically do is they just offset that hole. And the reason these don't slip the way that the polyurethanes, when you've used on other platforms, do, is because they are metal to metal. These are press fit into an aluminum body, so they're not going anywhere. We've been running one of these on one of our track cars for months, uh, no slippage at all, and they will pick you up almost three degrees of negative camber. So that's a good answer for, uh, for people who are running NDs, especially closer to the taller ride heights, because the ND does tend to be camber limited in the front in our experience. So the good option there for the NDs. Uh, Mazda Competition does make an NC option as well, although we get fewer complaints about lack of camber with those. So that's also, also a option. Now, all of these parts are in stock right now. That was one of the questions. How soon can I get them to my front door? Well, if you lived here in Grand Junction, um, you could take them home with you tonight, uh, but you don't. So a couple of days, <laughs> we have them in stock, ready to go. So that is the case at the moment. If you're ever unsure about that, just check our website because our website does show accurate up-to-date inventory for stock levels. Do we have any more questions? Nothing. Okay, well, that's about all I've got to say about uh, extended lower ball joints. Um, if you do have any questions, again, please do put them in the comments. We will do our best to answer them. Um, as always, if you like this content, like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff, you know the drill. Um, the, more, the more interaction we get, the more, uh, the more likes we get, the more it justifies us putting this sort of content out there. So in the meantime, my name is Keith Tanner from Fly Miata. Thanks for your attention, and we'll see you again soon.